Dr. Keith Watson. And today, PD Insurance has asked me to talk to you about what you should do if you happen to hit an animal while you are out driving. So the very first thing to do is be really vigilant. Uh, animals are like kids, they're not always predictable. You need to be aware and focused while you're driving. You know all of this, don't be on your phone. Don't be distracted by fiddling with your radio. Make sure you're aware of what's around and be particularly vigilant in busy times. So school drop-offs, uh, rush hour, holiday season, times like fireworks when there's likely to be a lot more stress for animals and there's more likely to be escapees. So the other thing I would say, if you do hit an animal on the road, this is not your fault. Please don't blame yourself for it. You're entitled to be there driving on the road. And actually, animals should be contained. They shouldn't be able to free roam onto roads without some sort of um, security. So be that a lead for a dog, be it a harness or a cage for a cat. Um, and, and I have to say, having hit a cat myself, unfortunately on my way to an after hours call, cats are really bad at lurking underneath cars. And if they're facing off with another cat at the time or get a fright, they will run out in front of you and you cannot see them, which means you may not be able to avoid hitting them, as I couldn't in my case. That's a horrible feeling, but really it is not your fault. You cannot see everything. All you can do is be aware as you can. So if you do happen to hit an animal, first thing, stop and make sure that it's actually safe for you. So make sure you have somewhere safe to stop and pull over. If you're in the middle of a multi-lane highway, please don't stop in the middle of the highway because you're going to cause more accidents and more harm to a lot more people. So make sure you've got somewhere safe to stop. That means you can be seen, you're not going to create a danger to other traffic, but also that everyone in the vehicle with you is also going to be safe. So particularly if you're traveling with kids, they can become very upset with seeing an animal being hit, making sure that they're safe and don't rush out and go and get themselves hit or injured as well. Really, really important. So make sure you are safe first and the people around you are safe. Sometimes when you've hit an animal, you can't actually find them uh, because they've run away and hidden somewhere. And again, cats are particularly good at this. Uh, so have a look around, knock on doors as long as it's safe to do so. Um, and if you need to, leave your contact details with somebody. Try and record the details of when it's happened, where it's happened, maybe take some photographs so that uh, you, because often in the, the rush of the moment you forget some of these details, but then you've got it really clear what was the environment actually like, were there parked cars around, were there other distractions, what are the animal factors, so, so what did the animal look like, was it a cat, was it a dog, what colour was it, big, small, all of those sort of details. If you have hit an animal and it is actually still on the road, again, first thing is ensure your own safety. Make sure you are not going to get hit. Uh, it might mean flagging down another vehicle to make sure they can keep an eye out for you while you deal with the animal. Um, or if you've got emergency, emergency cones or flashes in your, in your vehicle that you can put on to make sure that it's safe for you. Second thing is you need to be aware that if an animal's been hit and they're still alive and conscious, they're likely to be firstly very scared, but also probably really painful. And that means they're not necessarily going to be predictable. And it may also mean that if you try and come towards them, they're going to try and flee or fight. And fighting might mean that you get injured through bite wounds or scratches. Um, so if they're still on the road, first thing is approach them slowly and approach them from the front so that they can see you. And that gives them the chance to assess whether you're a threat or not. Uh, and obviously if you're doing it slowly, talking to them calmly and quietly, then they've got a chance to work out whether um, they're going to feel under threat or not and whether they're going to behave um, in a manner to protect themselves. So uh, bearing in mind that even then, if they can't run away, um, they may still be able to bite you if, you're going, if they think they're going to, you're going to cause them pain or they are in pain. So having some form of um, protecting yourself from that if you're carrying towels in your car or a jumper or some item of clothing that in bigger dogs you may be able to use as a, as a um, soft cloth 
muzzle around their nose and mouth so that they can't bite you, or putting a big padded one around their neck, so same thing, they can't get around to you as easily, but also they're less likely to damage themselves by trying to move. Try and get help if you can, uh, and that may actually even be picking up your phone and, and giving a veterinary clinic a call for some advice and letting them know what you can see, uh, and it may be they put you onto a rescue organisation or give you some more advice about how to proceed from there. Um, if you do need to pick them up to bring them in to a veterinary clinic, then I'd say first thing, be really aware that they could bite you because they're painful, so you need to protect yourself from injury as well. Try and use a towel or a blanket or a jumper, um, something like the parcel rack in your car. Uh, they can all be used as stretches or for smaller cats or dogs, wrapping them like a burrito so it's keeping them nice and contained, less likely to wriggle, less likely to damage themselves or do any more damage. Uh, if they're bleeding a lot, um, particularly if that blood is splurt spurting, uh, that's likely to be an artery and you need to put pressure directly over that area or slightly above it just to try and stem that bleeding. Um, and obviously you need to take them to a vet if they've been injured. Uh, try and take them to your, the closest vet if you can, preferably ring ahead because not every clinic is going to be capable of dealing with emergencies all of the time uh, and you need to make sure you're going somewhere where that animal can be seen in a timely manner where possible. Um, but also to, to get their microchip checked because it may appear that they haven't had any injuries whatsoever but you still have to know where they've come from. So uh, getting them scanned for a microchip so at least the, um, the carers to the animal can be contacted and we can do the best thing by them. So take care out there, right?